so speaking of Civil War, I do want to touch on the idea of Civil War because this is something that right-wing Americans are absolutely freaking obsessed with, uh, and I want to I want to say much about. It. I have a lot to say about it. Um, the this narrative is growing too much, and I'm I don't use this lightly, but it is a completely fascistic impulse. Authoritarians who want to control us so that they can have us silenced. There are two main reasons it's a fascistic impulse. First, it expresses a worldview of constantly being under siege and under attack. We're always one moment away from full-blown breakdown and societal collapse. This mentality enables authoritarianism pretty obviously because eventually you'll feel that only a dictator can stave off these threats to society. I am the law. But more importantly, we have learned that they conceive the sides of the civil war in a highly asymmetric way. The sides of the war aren't Republicans versus Democrats. It's not even right-wing militias versus Antifa or whatever. That's not the civil war they imagine. The civil war is between the state, its right-wing supporters, and the police, all united, versus protesters. To them, that is the civil war. Let's presuppose the civil war actually was between right-wing militias and armed left-wing groups. This is not a civil war that would ever even happen. It would never happen because wars are fought because of access to resources, competition between economic powers, different economic systems, things like this. There's incentive with the most left-wing people to overthrow the U.S. government. There's also incentive with the most right-wing people to have a coup and take over the U.S. government. But anyone who actually already has power whatsoever has absolutely no motivation for a civil war. The only people who may have that motivation are negligible people in society. They don't have enough power to enable that. If you think Trump wants a civil war, you're out of your freaking gourd. He wants the U.S. He wants to control the most powerful empire possible, which he is doing right now. He doesn't want that empire to collapse. No one wants their source of power to collapse. Politicians don't want a civil war because, I mean, they control the most powerful country in the world. They don't want to undermine that power. It's really pretty self-explanatory. Not only that, but while America in general is polarized, politicians of the both parties still work hand in hand. So we see an increasingly polarized America, but that's not what politicians see. They are still buddies. Democrats and Republicans eating their tuna salad at the freaking Senate commissary. That's They don't see an impending civil war, they see things working as they always have. You see how it works? Also, American intelligence, the US military, and the perpetual so-called deep state have no motivation for a civil war. Maybe even less than most politicians. They control the most powerful political apparatus in world history and they don't even have to be elected we hold the world ransom for 100 billion dollars american capitalists what as a third group what you know first talked about politicians what then american intelligence what capitalists don't want a civil war because they have the best arrangements in the world no other government but the U.S. government gives their capitalist class a better deal. 
they are getting the best deal one could possibly get of any capitalist government you could conceive of. The point is, a civil war, as conventionally conceived, is frankly just impossible. None of the parties who could potentially wage war have any incentive to wage war. You know, on the left, people talk about how revolution is basically impossible right now. There is no socialist revolutionary infrastructure. There isn't enough public sympathy with the revolutionary movement, etc. So, while there might be some members of the American left who might be really unrealistic in anticipating a revolution, most of the left still gets that a revolution can't really happen right now. Nope, not gonna work. And the American right is way, way more unrealistic in attempt anticipating a civil war. Because way the whole American right is doing it, and they don't see that it's... They don't think about it more than five seconds to see that it's the stupidest idea ever. You shut up! Oh, it doesn't... You stupid idiots! Because all of the civil war baiting won't result in a civil war. They can talk about it as much as they want. Their prized Republican politicians aren't going to declare war for them if they just keep talking about it. But all the talking about it does have an impact. It's already had an impact. To the conservatives, they see their imagined civil war as an extension of their prize culture war. You're a, a, a culture war warrior. And let me, let me let you in on something. No war has ever been fought because of culture. Ever. There's never been a war fought for culture. It's always been fought over the political control over material resources. Even the most culture-based wars you can think of, you know, you have the Crusades and the Thirty Years War, you know, the wars following Reformation. Those were religious wars, and even those were fought primarily for pro political control over land and resources. The Crusades was to control the highly desirable land around religious monuments and artifacts. The th they wanted the territory. They didn't care. The religion part was subsequent to controlling the land. The Thirty Years War, the war between the Reformation and the Catholics, that was a control for political power over Europe. Up until then, the Pope was almost like a uh, indirect second-hand king for, like, the, he, you needed the Pope's approval to make someone like the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, for example. The Pope had tremendous political power. The, the Thirty Years' War and the Reformation, or the wars that followed the Reformation, were wars to take away the political power of the Pope. Civil wars are never the extension of a culture war, because dominant classes, the capitalist class in our case, don't actually care about culture that much. Rich people don't have culture. Sorry, folks. It's true. Rich people don't have culture. They're cultureless. They're sc All they know is money. That is their culture. Instead, and this is my main point that I'm getting at, a culture war can escalate into violence, but that violence won't ever be symmetric and warlike. It won't be like troops lining up in a battlefield meeting, okay, we're gonna hash out this culture war. We want to tear down the monuments and you don't. Let's, let's battle. That does not happen. 
when a culture war escalates into the violence, it's not a war. It's just street fighting and, and terroristic violence. All of the tensions that exist in our society will continue to escalate because nothing is being done to alleviate the, these tensions. As that happens, more police will use more violence against protesters, more right-wing nut jobs will plow their cars through protesters like little cowards. You coward. And there will be an increased amount of violence and it will come from the state and the far right elements that are empowered by the state. That means the civil war as it can possibly exist has already started. Which is to say there isn't a civil war, but if there is one, the war is cops and right wing nut jobs protecting capitalist interests against protesters. The right wing side is allowed to attack the left wing side. And then on the other hand, if the left wing side even shows up peacefully, they may, may be gassed, beaten, arrested, or killed. So, that's what the so-called American Civil War II is. Police beating and killing protesters. The state repressing dissidents isn't and has never been a war. It's just plain, straightforward state repression. Authoritarians who want to control us so that they can have us silenced. That they frame as a war because they see themselves as on the side of the cop. Authoritarians who want to control us so that they can have us 